morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here we are for a beautiful night in the presence of God. This is actually day nine for us because we started a day early, Passover. Passover is technically nine, no, technically eight days, but it will not finish until tomorrow at the time uh, that we move from day to evening. Then Passover will be completed. So we will meet tonight and we'll also meet tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that this has been a beautiful time for you. I pray that this has been a time not just to learn, but a time to encounter God. Amen. Because what is Passover about? It is about meeting the Lord. It is about the Lord working in our lives. Would you close your eyes with me? Let us begin this night. Let us begin yet another moment that we have in the presence of God. Let us begin. Remembering the God. The God who got the people of Israel out of slavery, out of bondage, where they had been for 430 years. And the same God that got these people out of physical bondage In another Passover, the most important Passover of all, your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, gave himself, gave himself as the Passover lamb, gave gave himself as a sacrifice for me, for you, for us all. Because of that, we can we can now come boldly before the Lord. There's no hindrance between me and God. There's no hindrance between you and God. If you have applied the blood, the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, There's no hindrance, especially when you circumcise your heart. The reason that the Lord passed over the people, 
and did not bring judgment upon them is because he was calling them to himself. What he's doing now is the same thing. He's calling you to himself. So many of us are under restrictions and limitations, many things we can't do that we normally do. But in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of that, God is here. And he says, I am keeping you. And I'm calling you to myself. Will you answer that call? Will you answer that call? Will you come? What he wants is you. He wants you. He won't be satisfied with anything else. What he wants is you. What he wants is your heart. So I invite you right now, give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Take my heart, oh God. Take my life, oh God. Here I am, an offering unto you for the praise of your glory. Oh Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Alleluia. 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 Break through right now, Lord. Break through whatever it is. Break through any place that's been dry, any place that's been hurt broken, break through right now. Break through any fear. Break through any discouragement. Break through any unbelief. Break through any apathy, saying, I don't care. Ah, it doesn't matter. Break through all of that. Break through, Lord. Break through. Break through. He's breaking through right now. He's breaking through right now. There's, some, there's fire, there's hope, there's freedom, there's life. There's supernatural. You can come boldly before the throne of God. Don't let anything, you heard me, don't let anything hold you back. You were born for this. You were born for this. When you were born again, this seed was inside of you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Right now, right now, just give him your heart. He's calling you to himself. Are you getting closer? Are you getting closer? Are you getting closer? He wants to know you. He wants to know you. He wants to know you. He wants to be known by you. Are you getting closer? Uh, anybody say yes? Anybody say yes, I am, Lord. Yes, I'm yours, Lord. Yes, I am. Whatever you want, whatever you desire, here I am, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be your holy name. 
Expôs-se pelo Guilherme. Aleluia. Accusation. We cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God. We're going to grow, Lord. We're going to listen and change, oh Lord, what you want us to change. Accusation has absolutely no place at all in our minds, in our hearts. Hallelujah. You are loved, you are accepted. You are a new creation in God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Things are changing. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Amen. Things are changing. Hallelujah. 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 Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Have your way. Believe he's having his way. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to do it. Amen. We say, Lord, here we are. This Passover is about you. It's about us. It's about us getting together with you. Allowing you to work. Do your perfect work in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Yesterday, we talked about a significant Passover in the scripture. We talked about a time when God did something very powerful through the Passover and how it not just was powerful for them, but it speaks to us what Passover is supposed to be, what is supposed to happen, what we desire to happen in our life during this time. So I want to continue talking about another time of Passover. This is found in 2 Chronicles number 30. 2 Chronicles number 30. And we're going to read about King Hezekiah, the first 20 Verses from chapter 30 of 2 Chronicles. Here we have a great man of God, a king. His name was Hezekiah. Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. For the king and his princes and all the assembly in Jerusalem had taken counsel to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time because the priests had not consecrated themselves in sufficient number nor had the people assembled in Jerusalem. And the plan seemed right to the king and all the assembly. So they decreed to make a proclamation throughout all Israel from Beersheba to Dan, 
that the people should come and keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not kept it as often as prescribed. So couriers went throughout all Israel and Judah with letters from the king and his princes, as the king had commanded, saying, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, that he may turn again to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. Do not be like your fathers and your brothers who were faithless to the Lord God of their fathers so that he made them a desolation as you see. Do not now be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourself to the Lord and come to his sanctuary, which he has consecrated forever and serve the Lord your God that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brothers and your children will find compassion with their captors and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. So the couriers went from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as Zebulun, but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them. However, some men of Asher, of Manasseh, and Zebulun humbled themselves and came to Jerusalem. The hand of God was also on Judah to give them one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord. And many people came together in Jerusalem to keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the second month, a very great assembly. They set to work and removed the altars that were in Jerusalem, and all the altars for burning incense they took away and threw into the brook Kidron. And they slaughtered the Passover lamb on the 14th day of the second month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed so that they consecrated themselves and brought burnt offerings into the house of the Lord. So they took their accustomed posts according to the law of Moses, the man of God. And the priests threw the blood that they received from the hand of the Levites. For there were many in the assembly who had not consecrated themselves. Therefore the Levites had to slaughter the Passover lamb for everyone who was not clean to consecrate it to the Lord. For a majority of people, many of them from Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet they ate the Passover otherwise than as prescribed. For Hezekiah had prayed for them, saying, May the good Lord pardon everyone who sets his heart to seek God, the Lord, the God of his fathers, even though not according to the sanctuary's rules of cleanness. And the Lord heard Hezekiah and healed the people. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Amen. King Hezekiah was one of the greatest kings in the southern kingdom of Judah. We had mentioned a few nights ago about how they were supposed to do the Passover in the place God had set aside for them, which they didn't even know where it was when Moses gave the order. But later we realized it was to be the city of Jerusalem. And that was the place where they were supposed to do the Passover. But if you remember, we mentioned how the king the king Jeroboam was scared to let them go to the Passover and the other feasts. And so he made up his own thing. 
he didn't follow God. And so for around 200 years, the 10 tribes did not celebrate the Passover. And many times, even in the southern kingdom where they had Jerusalem, they didn't always celebrate it. They got caught up with a lot of distraction and a lot of things. But Hezekiah, something comes over him. And he said, we've got to do something. We need to bring restoration to this nation. We need to bring restoration to the people. And what does restoration mean? If you're restoring something, you're taking something that was lost or something that you didn't have, and you're bringing it back. We could say 11 days ago, I was restored to my family, I was restored to the city, okay? I was outside of the city doing missions, as you know, and then all this stuff hit with the virus, and so it was quite difficult to get back. But we're here. Amen. We was we were restored. God made it possible. And that's what restore is. Something that was some way before is that way again. And you could take an old, like an old uh, guitar or something that's in bad shape, and you could restore it. Actually, we were at the. Uh, son of the pastor in Argentina.